Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I finally figured out the perfect state to read a Jonathan Hickman comic, and it's the state I just read it in, which is I had just woken up, no it wasn't right here, um, and <coughs> I was groggy, uh, it's middle afternoon, not really sure which way is up, but I was like, ah, oh, I got a little time to read and review a comic, uh, and then I just picked one out randomly, and I'm like, oh, Jonathan Hickman, I don't think I have the the mental acuity to uh, handle one of his books right now, but uh, this is, <laughs> I've never understood one of his books <coughs> uh, better. Usually it's in the middle of a day when I've been up for several hours and fairly productive and thinking about 10 different things. So that sometimes it takes me like an hour to read it. It's like, oh, I'm getting confused or I gotta slow down. Oh, I just read this straight through. Like it was some like Captain America comic written by Mark Grunewald in the 80s. So anyway, this is, House of X number three, um, since uh, uh, Jonathan Hickman is a big brain, he everything's fancy, so he has an order you're supposed to read it in. This is basically the beginning of the two simultaneous uh, miniseries where he's launching his take on X-Men, which is, by the way, you would think it would just rotate House of X, Powers of X, but no. House of X, Powers of X, House of X, Powers of X twice in a row, House of X, twice in a row, hashtag woke. I, I have no idea why you would do that. Um, but anyway, this finally answers the, the age-old question, if you had the chance, would you kill Hitler as a baby? To which Jonathan Hickman said, why bother killing Hick Hitler as a baby when you can just kill her, his mother at any point in her life? Uh, well, before she had him, obviously. Uh, so um, it's a it's a very simple story uh, that might seem complicated because you're seeing a good amount of dialogue, and it's it's not like this you know that simple C spot run type of old school dialogue. Um, not that it's overly fancy, but it's uh, written like a very smart. It, it's written like a very smart person writing smart characters. Notice I didn't put a very in front of. I don't think. If Scott Sum Summers was uh, as smart as Jonathan Hickman, a lot of this stuff wouldn't happen. He would just say, hey, wait, you guys are just buttering me up so I can go die for you. This is analogous to, you know, uh, uh, Muslim extremist terrorists radicalizing youth. Oh, you know, everyone's going to respect you and girls are going to want you after you blow yourself to pieces. Um, uh, they're, they're literally, like, complimenting him and they're like... Uh, uh, you will be immortalized. People will never forget you. It's like it's a nice way of saying you're gonna go die. Uh, so then they've got uh, a uh, mission, and it's a pretty simple mission. The funny thing is, they describe it right here. I think Jonathan Hickman knows that he he uh, confuses people, so he explains something perfectly twice. They basically explain the mission right here, and then we get an infographic. Uh, telling you why it's important, really hammering it home. I, you know, there's so many, you got the, the Sentinels, you got different breeds of the Sentinels, you got the Master Mold, he introduced the Mother Mold, then there's the Omega Sentinels, those were big like, well like 15, 20 years ago, and then got Nimrod from the 1980s. The weirdest thing is Nimrod, which is kind of in the middle, but was from the future. Nimrod's like the big deal, you know what I mean? That's the Terminator you want to, you know, kill the scientists who create that Terminator. So they got a mother mold, which makes master molds, which makes sentinels. But what they found out is in all the timelines this happens, but this is the real danger. So they're trying to destroy this from happening. Um, actually, it was good that he explained that twice. <laughs> it wasn't. It really hammers it home. So then, um, then he, uh, he recaps basically the whole story in very simple... Uh, language, you know, um, it's it's almost more like he was. T if you were in the real world and you were a journalist and you're trying to get the story in your head straight, wait a minute, <laughs> what what world do journalists try to tell the story truthfully? I'm sorry, <laughs> if you were a person who was normal and not biased and evil, <laughs> and you were trying to tell someone what really happened later, which should be called a journalist, but that's absolutely been ruined. Um, so I gotta skip a bunch of pages for the copyright gods. Uh, this guy, is this uh, get this guy's name, it's Silva, right? Something like R.B. Silva. I'm a little too big 
Pepe Larraz. Come on. Come on. Every single part about this panel looks cool. By the way, I gotta say one thing. Yes, the, the art and the, the writing are good, but I've gotta say, with, with some exceptions for the SJW books, I do have to give kudos to the colorists who are working for Marvel right now. They are consistently excellent. Um, and uh, email me at diversityincomics at gmail.com. You can use a, uh, you can use a uh, pseudonym if you want to. Um, so uh, I, I won't belabor all the uh, multiple subplots. I'll just skip to the actual rescue mission, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, this is, uh, they're using a uh, Shire uh, scout to go to the um, mother mold factory. One of the things that I really liked is um, there is an aspect of, I'll call it scientific panic. <laughs> um, they don't know who's on this ship, but uh, they know they're not, they're, they're just a bunch of humans with guns and power armor, and I think they have like one cyborg. Uh, they're not even close to having this thing uh, complete, and now they've got a ship full of X-Men. And what you're seeing is very smart people, not exactly panic, but assess a situation in which they don't win, um, to which they they get real old school. I liked, uh, <laughs> this, is, this video is just me calling Jonathan Hickman very smart for uh, eight and a half minutes. Um, Jonathan Hickman is smart. So he does things like smart people, like he understands that different uh, mutants with different power sets and different power levels are valuable in sometimes very specific roles. And he uses Nightcrawler for what he's basically best for, reconnaissance. Uh, they have a plan, but they want to make sure their plan is viable, so they say, teleport in there, scatter it out, get back to us. That's what he's perfect for. Um, so I really like seeing a team of X-Men that I recognize acting like X-Men, not acting like villains, not acting like space aliens or uh, Jonathan Hickman. Um, and uh, there's some real human moments, even with the evil uh, human scientists. Um, uh, because I put evil in quotes, because from their point of view, they're not evil. They're, they're about to be eradicated, so they're going to hurt the people who are going to eradicate them. Obviously, there's a middle ground between just destroying every single person of one side that you have a problem with. By the way, a bunch of people have been get, trying to get me to chime in on this uh, latest uh, Zoe Quinn thing. I did some little bit of research, and as usual with Gamergate, I don't feel like I'm, I'm intelligent enough on this subject matter to really talk about it that much. All I, I will do is defer back to my standard answer on uh, social media and the law is that uh, social media is not meant to uh, it's not supposed to be a court and it's not supposed to be a weapon it's, it was just created for you're in the line for Starbucks and it's a little slow and you just need to entertain yourself for like two and a half minutes um, uh, it's not a place to destroy someone and if you try to destroy someone it is possible you could destroy them but you might end up destroying yourself so keep it uh, uh, between the uh, uh, navigational beacons as uh, uh, Jimmy Buffett would say you got your criminal court, you got your civil court. That's that's where you handle grievances in the 21st century. Um, we don't we don't engage in duels, and uh, you don't uh, uh, use an app that was created to uh, uh, comment on Mario Lopez's abs uh, to destroy people. Just civil court, criminal court. That's how you do it. Um, somehow someone is getting offended by that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he just came out as not pro-anarchy. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, great issue. I think Yellow Flash uh, said uh, this is the one where it all comes together. It really was. It feels like I said that the last time, didn't I? <laughs> I said that two should have been one and one should have been zero. This is like a standard smartly written X-Men adventure. Like it doesn't feel like Jonathan Hickman's big brain thesis paper. So he, he, he went back to school. He's at whatever, Columbia. And uh, he's like, can I submit my thesis paper as a, uh, 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 25 different uh, comic books? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. It's academia in the 21st century. Literally nothing matters. As long as you're not a school shooter, you're good. 
So anyway, that's about it. Uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. Your uh, funding uh, original content and an original lawsuit. Uh, links in the description for the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. And I'll have a, another uh, new comic book re review up tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.